In the Porter Neuroscience Research Center at the National Institutes of Health, scientists from multiple institutes work on all aspects of neurobiology, from structures of molecules to circuits and behavior, using a wide variety of experimental techniques. Hi, I'm Mark Mayer, scientist emeritus of the National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke. Hi, I'm Chi Hong Li, senior investigator at the National Institute of Child Health and Human Development. We are here at the Cajal Exhibition in the Porter Neuroscience Research Center to describe a collaborative project which led to the discovery of surprising and unexpected functional properties of Drosophila glutamate receptor ion channels. The selective action of m methyldiaspartic acid on NMDA receptors and development of the antagonist AP5 played a key role in the discovery of the role of NMDA receptors in learning and memory. Because the phylogenetic analysis of insect glutamate receptor ion channel cDNA sequences revealed grouping into the three familiar vertebrate families, we expected that the functional properties of Drosophila iguars would match that of their vertebrate counterparts. Hello, I'm Yan Li, a postdoctoral fellow in NISHD. Using heterologous expression in hex cells and xenopus oocytes, we screened five Drosophila kinetic receptors for functional activity. Tehe Han and I found that KR1D generated rapidly desensitizing responses to glutamate with strong biphasic rectification. As expected for a kinate receptor, we found that KR1D was activated by micromolar concentrations of volcanic acid and also by glutamate and quisqualate, but not AMPA, NMDA, or aspartate. A surprising result was obtained by Puva Dakar, a postdoctoral fellow in Dr. Mayer's lab. She found completely unexpectedly that NMDA and MP5 protected KR1D against proteolysis. Since I had already found that NMDA was not an agonist, I tested whether it could inhibit activation of KR1D by glutamate. This indeed turned out to be the case. The ligand binding domains of glutamate receptors assemble as dimers in which each subunit is shaped like a clamshell. Like a Pac-Man, the clamshell closes upon binding agonists to activate ion channel gating, but with antagonists bound, the clamshells are trapped in the open state. Hello, I'm Purva Dharkar, a postdoctoral fellow in NICHD. From data collected at Beamline ID22 at the advanced photon source, we found that KR1D crystals diffracted to very high resolution. KR1D crystallizes a dimer assembly and as shown here for the NMDA complex, electron density was very high quality. Comparison of the KR1D glutamate and NMDA complex structures revealed the expected closed cleft conformation for glutamate, but with NMDA, the cleft was open. Although NMDA acts as an agonist on vertebrate gluN2 receptors and triggers a closed cleft conformation like that produced by glutamate, the KR1D the open cleft conformation explains its activity as an antagonist. In addition, we succeeded in crystallizing KR1D with AP5, which, consistent with its action as an antagonist, produced an open cleft conformation. Indeed, the extent of opening was much greater than for a vertebrate NMDA receptor gluN2 subunit AP5 complex, but within the same range as found for vertebrate KNIT receptor antagonist structures. We also studied the Drosophila AMPA receptors. DGLU-R1 is the Drosophila AMPA receptor subunit with 70% amino acid sequence similarity to the red glu a 2 subunit. Using expression of recombinant DGLU-R1, we made another surprising discovery. We found that AMPA, the namesake agonist for this family, produced weaker activation of DGLU-R1 than glutamate or kinate. I was also able to purify and crystallize the ligand binding domain for DGLU-R1. Consistent with the ANS results, proteolysis protection assays for DGLU-R1 reveal weak protection by AMPA. A clue to the mechanism came from an amino acid sequence alignment that revealed substitution of the threonine present in vertebrate receptors by a tyrosine residue in DGLU-R1. When we saw the crystal structure for the DGLU-R1 glutamate complex, we found that the shape of the ligand binding cavity was strikingly different from that for vertebrate AMPA receptors, and that the tyrosine residue collides with AMPA and prevents it from binding to DGLU-R1. The discovery of the novel properties of Drosophila glutamate receptors, on one hand, is a cautionary tale. Homology 
doesn't confirm functional properties. On the other hand, they inform us about a wealth of pharmacological reagents available for acute manipulation of transmitter receptors. When Chihon approached me with the idea of performing functional studies on recombinant drosophila glutamate receptors, I thought it would be useful to combine these with the structural analysis. The results turned out to be much more interesting than I anticipated and highlight both the role of serendipity in science and the need to keep an open mind.